Hi, my name is Shinsuke Agehara. I'm a plant physiologist at University of Florida, Gulf Coast Research and Education Center, located near Tampa. Today I'll be talking about a study on bud break induction effects of hydrogen cyanamide and defoliants in blueberry grown under insufficient chilling conditions. This is the work of my former PhD student, Sean Yeo Lin, who graduated this May and is now a research scientist in a PGR company in Taiwan. Blueberries are produced in diverse climates nowadays from Michigan to Florida. This figure shows monthly blueberry production in the US. As you can see in the figure, Florida ships the majority of blueberries in March and April when market prices are high. So fruit earliness is very critical to Florida's blueberry industry. Fruit earliness depends on the timing and uniformity of bud break. Although we have roachal varieties that can achieve a high percentage of bud break in our climate, inadequate chilling can make bud break a slow process over a prolonged period, limiting the profitability of blueberry production in Florida. Hydrogen cyanamide is a chemical used as a dormancy breaking agent for some temporary fruit crops where insufficient winter chill is a limiting factor. The most well-known commercial product of hydrogen cyanamide is Domex. It is highly effective in improving the rate and uniformity of bud break, fruit earliness, and fruit yield. It's widely used by blueberry growers in Florida. However, there are some drawbacks to hydrogen cyanamide. Because of the negative effects on human health and the environment, the use of hydrogen cyanamide is strictly regulated or even prohibited in some countries. The application rate needs to be optimized for each variety to minimize the phytotoxicity. And its efficacy is affected by chilling hours. So the question is, are there alternatives to hydrogen cyanamide? In some fruit crops, foliar spray of fertilizer are used to induce defoliation and bud break. The examples are zinc sulfate on peach and urea on blackberry. So the first objective of this study is to compare the effects of hydrogen cyanamide and defoliants on defoliation, flower bud break, fruit earliness, and yield of blueberry grown under inadequate chilling conditions. The second objective is to understand the potential roles of phytohormones in flower bud break of blueberry and the mode of actions of hydrogen cyanamide and defoliants. We conducted a field experiment in a commercial farm located in West Central Florida. The variety is emerald, which is a rochio variety grown widely in this region. The planting density was 5,382 plants per hectare. There were five treatments, water control, hydrogen cyanamide, potassium thiosulfate, urea, and zinc sulfate. We used a completely randomized plaque design with four replicates per treatment with 20 plants per plot. This is the farm we conducted the experiment. We used this air blast sprayer for all the treatments on December 26th, and harvesting was performed between April 5th and May 6th. This slide shows the data of defoliation and bud break. As expected, defoliation was induced rapidly by hydrogen cyanamide but it occurred more gradually in other treatments. The similar trend was also found in the bud break data. If you compare the patterns of bud break and the chill accumulation, you can see that bud break was maximized in the hydrogen cyanamide treatment before winter chill accumulation. But bud break in other treatments occurred in parallel to winter chill accumulation. Although Tukey's test did not detect significant difference, 
between zinc sulfate and other defoliants, you can see that both defoliation and bar break show three distinct patterns with zinc sulfate showing intermediate efficacy between hydrogen cyanamide and other defoliants. So we tried carb fitting to identify the best fit model. We fitted four models to each dataset, including linear, quadratic, exponential plateau, and sigmoidal models. And the model with the smallest corrected AKIK information criterion was selected as the best fit model. For defoliation, the best fit model was linear for the control and urea treatment, but it was exponential plateau for hydrogen cyanamide, potassium thiosulfate, and zinc sulfate. In the exponential plateau model, coefficient A plus B indicate the maximum Y value, or in this case, maximum defoliation rate. The estimated maximum defoliation rate was 98.5% for hydrogen cyanamide, 69.5% for potassium thiosulfate, and 75.6% for zinc sulfate. Coefficient K is the rate constant, which indicates the speed of the response, in this case, defoliation. And the rate constant K showed significant differences among the three treatments, suggesting that hydrogen cyanamide can induce defoliation more rapidly than potassium thiosulfate and zinc sulfate. And zinc sulfate can induce defoliation more rapidly than potassium thiosulfate. For the hydrogen cyanamide, the best fit model for bar break was again exponential plateau. And the maximum bar break percentage was estimated to be 79% based on the coefficient A plus B. For the control and defoliant treatments, the best fit model was sigmoidal. In the sigmoidal model, coefficient A indicates the maximum Y value. So you can see the maximum bar break percentage ranged from 71.7% to 83.7% in the control and defoliant treatments, which indicate that final bar break percentage was relatively similar among all treatments, including hydrogen cyanamide. X0 indicates the X value at 50% of the maximum Y value. So it can be used to evaluate the speed of bar break. Based on uh, X0 values, zinc sulfate significantly advanced bar break by 11 days compared to control, KTS, and urea. In this slide, the table above shows the total marketable EO data, and the figure below shows the weekly marketable EO data. You can see that the hydrogen cyanamide treatment had the highest yield, 171% higher than the control. Among the defoliants, zinc sulfate had the highest yield, which was 41% higher than the control. But the difference was not statistically significant. Correlation analysis revealed a strong positive relationship between very number and yield, but no significant correlation between the average very weight and yield, suggesting that the yield increase was due mainly to the increase in flu set. Finally, this is the phytohormone data. Four phytohormones, ABA, gibberellic acid, jasmonic acid, and IAA, which is the arxin, were quantified at eight days before treatment, one, nine, and 20 days after treatment. 
from one to nine day after treatment, but show some swelling, but but development stage remained the same in all treatments. At 20 days after treatment, the control but showed no significant change, but but break was observed in the hydrogen cyanamide treatment, and separation of bus scales was observed in the zinc sulfate treatment. Looking at the phytohormone data, ABA showed significant reductions in response to hydrogen cyanamide at one and nine days after treatment. But the ABA concentration went back to the control level at 20 days after treatment in the hydrogen cyanamide treatment. There was no significant change in the zinc sulfate treatment compared to the control. Gibraltic acid showed no significant treatment effect for both hydrogen cyanamide and zinc sulfate. Jasmonic acid showed significant increases in both hydrogen cyanamide treatment and zinc sulfate treatment, but the response was more rapid for hydrogen cyanamide than for zinc sulfate. And IAA showed a temporal reduction in response to hydrogen cyanamide, no significant change in the zinc sulfate treatment. In summary, the results suggest that hydrogen cyanamide is highly effective in promoting both defoliation and bar break. Zinc sulfate is effective in promoting defoliation. Zinc sulfate accelerates bar break compared to the control and other defoliants, but its effectiveness is limited compared to hydrogen cyanamide. Hydrogen cyanamide is highly effective in advancing fruit ripening and increasing yield. Among the tested defoliants, zinc sulfate treatment had the highest fruit yield, but the difference was not statistically significant. So the conclusion is, uh, although zinc sulfate shows some potential, defoliants are not effective alternatives to hydrogen cyanamide. This slide shows the proposed modes of action for hydrogen cyanamide and zinc sulfate induced bar break. We think that JA plays an important role in bar break induction in blueberry and that JA accumulation inhibits ABA accumulation. Both increased JA production and the reduction in the ABA level induce bar break in blueberry and we consider that this is the rapid process. Zinc sulfate may have this mode of action, but we think zinc sulfate is not as effective as hydrogen cyanamide in inducing JA accumulation. That's why zinc sulfate induced bar break is more gradual compared to hydrogen cyanamide. In addition, based on the bar break that occurred in parallel to chill accumulation in the zinc sulfate treatment, we also think that zinc sulfate induced bar break has another pathway, which is the slow process involving defoliation, increased receptability to chilling, and increased chilling accumulation, which can also help promote bar break. I'd like to thank all collaborators and lab members who helped us with this project. And a huge thank you to Austin Farms who let us conduct this study in their farm. Thank you and I hope you enjoy this presentation.